I'd like to say I was responsible for selecting the best parents possible, but I was blessed to be raised in a family where I had a father who worked two jobs all his life, a mother that was devoted to the father and the three children that they'd raised. Well, we often talked about government and service, the importance of accepting certain responsibilities as a citizen, the impulse, the drive to serve, and to work with people similarly committed is something that uh, I probably picked up early on at the dinner table in that 15 or 20 minute conversation before my father went to a second job and then having given the opportunities in multiple ways through my life, grown even more appreciative of the opportunities I have been given in my congressional district, by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and by President Bush. I hope I served you well. I mean, that's what you, you hope at the end of the day, as imperfect as we are, but in balance. People will say, you know, we're glad we gave him that opportunity. He did a pretty good job. I'll always be grateful that those people gave me that opportunity. It's just important to me. It's just important to me. My first connection actually with the United States Coast Guard was when I was a young congressman from northwestern Pennsylvania and a couple of occasions I went to visit the Coast Guard station in Erie, PA and became quite aware of the maritime safety mission they had. My respect and admiration for Alexander Hamilton goes back to being somewhat of a student of history and the Constitution. It's his idea to create a U.S. revenue cutter service. It was founded in 1790, and it has been providing peace and wartime services to our country ever since. I think the United States Coast Guard is the most effective, most efficient organization within the federal government. They have multiple missions whether it's inland waterways, ports and harbors, the coast, the sea coast, the Great Lakes coast, you've got it. On March 1st, 2003, the United States Coast Guard was transferred from the Department of Transportation to the Department of Homeland Security. And from that day forward, uh, almost on a daily basis, I had the opportunity to work with and learn to admire and respect the attitude of the Coast Guard, their service, uh, their commitment, and the whole notion that we can do their Semper Paratus. They've been involved in every major military engagement globally. but they'll also remember at Katrina. Remember the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. They chase down drug runners, they deal with maritime security. But we don't appreciate every single day that they're part of our defense establishment, that they're part of our anti-terrorism force. They serve the public. Is that realm gives them both the challenges and the opportunities not only to demonstrate who they are, but to demonstrate their commitment to 330 million Americans. I think it's so critically important to elevate and honor that tradition of service by building a national museum. That service has been going on for centuries, and to recognize it is something that I think this America and hopefully others will embrace and support in the months and years ahead. On September 11th, I was governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I ended up uh, 
getting from my home in Erie down to Harrisburg, hopping on an Army helicopter, Big Chinook, flying into Shanksville, Pennsylvania. It was a profoundly painful day. And I think in the aftermath, every single American, had they been given a call by the President of the United States to take on a new and different task, would have stood up, saluted, and said, okay, Mr. President, what do you want me to do? A couple of days later, when the, the President called and we discussed a new position in the White House, I've been drafted once before in the United States Army. I felt like I was getting another draft notice, this time from the President, who happened to be a friend of mine. Again, the country was under the leadership of the President, it was working hard not only to deal with that painful day and everything associated with it, the horror, the death, the, the angst, the anger, the anguish, but also saying, all right, it happened once, what do we do to make sure it doesn't happen again? I think it's important when people think of my great affection and admiration for the Coast Guard to understand a couple of other things. I was still governor in transition to the newly created office in the White House. The very first federal agency that rushed to my side to send an emissary to say, we will help you in whatever way we can. The first agency that made the first contact to volunteer their people, their resources, was the United States Coast Guard. And the person that delivered that powerful message in no uncertain terms was Admiral Jim Loy. And Admiral Loy ultimately became my deputy secretary. I can't imagine a stronger, better, more committed partner with the leadership and personal skills. And uh, Admiral Loy also became a dear friend. One of my most vivid images in the post 9-11 world was in within days uh, on the steps of the Capitol. Republicans and Democrats uh, from the House of Representatives and the Senate joined together, God bless America, in a sense of unity, purposefulness, commitment. We are united. We are the United States of America. And you go from that moment to the environment in Washington, D.C. today, where finger pointing, accusations, very personal in nature, uh, and has created an environment where I think most Americans would uh, say, what happened to the collective commitment and desire to govern? I would like to think that the leadership in both chambers and in both parties to get back to the business of governing. That's my hope. Remind ourselves of everybody standing on those steps. It's a good visual. I think we ought to think about it more often.